Hello everybody and welcome to Quest for Creative, episode 18. In the last episode, I made a Simpsons reference that I doubt anybody actually got. And we created this monstrosity. Bing, bing. Where I sacrifice a whole bunch of baby cows and make pink slime. And I've got a bit of it, um, enough to do what I need to do at least. Uh, but I did have to expand the uh, meat tank a little bit because it was completely full and the slaughterhouse was completely full. And it would appear that the pink slime is ultra rare in comparison. Um, in case you're curious, what I did... Pop... Oh, yeah. Micro blocks like flying away from me. I don't know why. But anyways, I just created uh, two sets of fluid ducts going out. And I set the pink slime... Once I got a bucket full... I set the pink slime to the white list here, and then the meat is in its own little pipe back here. Plop. And it seemed to have actually increased how fast I'm getting the pink slime. However, I'm probably mistaken about that. That might just been an assumption kind of thing. Just it, it, it seemed that way. I was, I'm probably wrong on that. Okay, so now that we have this pink slime, what can we do with it? Well, the first thing we need is a bucket full of it. Bloop. Alright, so we got a pink slime bucket. And then we need a place where we can put it. So you can actually put pink slime down, like that. And then if you wait a couple of moments... And a couple more moments... And a couple more moments... Did it break? There it goes. Okay, see, now we have a pink slime. Do you grow any bigger? You have half a heart of health. Do you regen? Are you painful even? No, not really. It's kind of cute, though. I guess. Yeah. Alright, so then we get these pink slime balls. And this is the reason we need the pink slime. Now, I'm going to show you a trick that I learned how to do. What you need is a pink slime ball, at least one of them, a couple of the gelatinous slimes, or just the regular green slime balls, and another little device, which I actually keep in the house because I didn't actually think it would be this useful or would actually ever show up on camera. It's called the Unifier. That's this guy down here from Mine Factory Reloaded. Now, if we take a gelatinous slime right now and put it into the input side of the unifier, we get a regular slime ball, the green slime ball. But we have these preferences here that I can set the unifier to. So if I throw the slime ball in there, well, okay, I get jack squat for the slime ball. But the gelatinous slime gives me the pink slime balls. Yay! So now I have a whole bunch of pink slime balls. Actually, I've got a whole bunch more pink slime balls because I'm showing this off, and I already did this yesterday after I got my first pink slime. So now I have a whole bunch of pink slime balls that I don't know what I can do with. Let's see, you. Uh, I could do everything that you can do with the slime balls. Is there anything really special? Oh, apparently we can also make congealed blood with it because uh, that unifier works off the ore dictionary. And as long as we set the preferences properly, ball of glue, coagulated blood, a lot of Tinker's Construct stuff. Uh, no, I can't do anything else with the pink slime balls. I can't even make blocks out of them like I can with the blue slime or the green slime. Eh, whatever. Though, I think, aren't the blue slime and the green slime something else? Yeah, they're Tinker's Construct. This is Mine Factory Reloaded. So, yeah. Um, different mod, different rules. Alright, so now that we have our pink slime balls, which I don't have in my inventory because I don't particularly care at the moment, what can we do with them? Well, we can do the thing that I've been hinting at for the past couple episodes, the little secret thing that I've been waiting for, and that is... This guy right here, the laser drill. Yes, I am going to show you guys how to get infinite ores. 
straight up, just infinite ores. All right, so what you need, you need four laser drill prechargers, which if we hit R, we can see that they're the ones that need the pink slime balls. So you need four pink slime balls. And these aren't actually that hard to make as long as you're far enough in the game. I mean, glowstone illuminator, um, clicky, which is just energized glowstone. So glowstone that's run through a magma crucible, uh, and the illuminator frame, I mean, redstone, silver nuggets, and hearted glass. And hearted glass is insane, insanely easy. Pulverized obsidian and pulverized lead. And, I mean, we have an infinite obsidian generator over there. We made that in a previous episode. Uh, so we need four laser drill prechargers. The laser drill itself. I'm going to use a tesseract because... That's going to be the easiest way to get this thing power, especially since the source of my power is over here, which I think I pointed this out in the last episode, but that glitch that I pointed out two episodes ago with the Galacticraft aluminum heavy wire and the uh, thermal expansion energy conduits, I think I'm taking advantage of that glitch here, but with this particular setup, if the glitch is fixed then I still get infinite power, just not as much. So I don't have to change this setup, but I'm still taking advantage of the glitch. Anyways, all of my power, that's 1,600 RF per tick, is going into this Tesseract, and all it does is send energy. That's it. does nothing else. So, whoop, wrong chest. I need a Tesseract for the energy. I also need another Tesseract. Technically, you could do this with one Tesseract if you do it right. I'm just not going to do it that way. Uh, but I need a second Tesseract for the item output. And I'll explain why later. We need a chest or two, which I could use this, but I use that for something else. So I'm not worried about it. Uh, we need the chest to output the items into. I, wanted, I decided to use the reinforced iron chests. Uh, because they're significantly larger than the regular chest, so that's what I'm going to use. Uh, we need a couple redstone energy conduits. Uh, we need eight, I believe, total. I'm not 100% sure. And then, as far as I can tell, this part is optional. Uh, you know what? Let's actually just get started building, and I'll get to it. Now, before you place the laser drill... This is the very first thing you have to do, is you have to dig a hole to either bedrock or the void. So I have prepared this hole earlier. goes the entire way down to bedrock. Wee thunk. Now, because I know I'm going to get to ask this, no, you do not have to surround this thing in glass. I did it because it looks cool. That's it. No other reason. But yeah, you... The, you have to do this first. You cannot place the laser drill and then dig a hole. You have to dig the hole first. Wee. All right, what else do I need? I need some form of block I can use real quick, which I have some cobblestone in here. That'll work. Because you have to drill the hole first, we have to cheat a little bit when it comes to placing the laser drill. So just put a block there and then put the laser drill there. And then we can see that it's actually ready to go. It's, it's, it registered that it's, you know, set up properly because we got the drill itself right there going the entire way down to bedrock. And then we just pop that real quick. And, um, those, those others out there that have actually paid attention to this stuff already, uh, might be saying that, uh, if you put it up at build level, it will work better. I have found absolutely zero evidence to that fact at all so i'm just putting it on ground level and i'm just gonna see uh but i have seen nothing in the wiki uh nothing in my own personal testing nothing that indicates that putting it up at build height does anything different than putting it down at ground level so we're gonna go with that uh so then we need our four laser drill pre-chargers now you don't need all four of them you can get away with using one of them but each of these laser drill prechargers can only input 5,000 RF per tick. So if you're making 10,000 RF per tick, you're not using half of that. I'm making 16. 
So technically, I need four of them to get to take advantage of all. Ooh, I'm gonna go to sleep real quick. To, to yeah, I technically I would need all four of them to take advantage of all of the power. Ugh, come on, sleep. Screw you. But uh, yeah, I mean I don't really need all four of them. But if I expand the system, the power system, then I will need all four of them. And if I expand it past twenty thousand RF per tick, then I'm actually producing more power than this drill can take in. So I guess technically I could have a bunch of laser drills working all at once. So then we take our laser drill prechargers, put them down. They have to be one block away and that little circle that's there. That is a very loud dog outside. You guys probably can't hear it because the gain on my microphone is really low, but that is an extremely loud dog outside. And he is pissed. There's another dog out there. That's what's going on. Yes, I can speak dog. Anyway, so let's get back to work. All right, so we can see in the little icon, there's like a little hole there. And then there's a little hole here. They have to be pointing at each other, and then we get our little drill here. Um, they have to be one block away, like they are now. Two blocks away, it won't work. And the hole points away from you when you place the block. So it's just this simple. Though there is a button... Uh, not that button, not that button, not that button. I forget which button it was. There it is. Okay. The backslash button. Um, it, it, it pops up this message. One way block facing set to away, one way blocks facing set to torch. Now, I don't know if that's from Mind Factory, but hey, so uh, these were set to away. So let us plunk this down and if the hole faces us then that's what it's for plunk nope that's not what it's for no idea what it's for <laughs> not a clue Alrighty. so next step um we need to get these things power so what we could do we could run power to each of these drill prechargers by themselves but uh over here by the way don't touch those oh they don't do anything yet <laughs> Uh, so let's get our Tesseract out here, and I will put a Tesseract right on top here, and we will set this to what I have predefined already. So that's the that's the frequency that Tesseract is running on and outputting energy to. Uh, don't need to worry about that. We will set to leave those alone for right now, and energy mode receive only. Actually, you know what? Let's just skip a step. So... Item mode send only, energy mode receive only. So what this Tesseract is doing is receiving power and sending items. That's where the third Tesseract comes into play. And the reinforced chests. Uh, let's see, let's... F9. Where are my chunks? Now granted, this really isn't going to matter because my power source is outside of this chunk. But I want to see if I can keep these inside of the same chunk. All right, so let's set this to that. Uh, so same frequency. Three Tesseracts, same frequency. Item mode, receive only. Let's turn those off. So this Tesseract is only receiving items on frequency 255. That Tesseract is receiving power and sending items on frequency 255. And that Tesseract over there is sending power on frequency 255. So we have kind of a three-way thing kind of going on here. So if everything works, this Tesseract should output into this iron chest. Unless I have to have pipes here, which I might. I'm not 100% sure about that. We're about to find out. But we still need to get power. So if this guy is receiving power, then we can just plug in our redstone energy conduits. Boop, boop. Boop, 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 and boop, boop. Okay, so now we can see that it's doing work. Once the work gets up to the top, it will output an item. Basically, it randomly generates from a huge number of different types of ores that are in the game, and it, it will do any of them right now. And let's see. Yes, we got iron ore. Okay, I've got plenty of iron ore, not terribly worried about that. 
but of course it's just going to work again. Let's go tech out these guys. Oh, we're dropping power. I may not be taking as, as big of an advantage of that glitch as I originally thought. Oh, well. Oh, that one seems to be working, though. That one works. That one does not. And that one works. I don't understand. <laughs> it's a glitch. That's, uh, yeah. I'll, 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 what I should probably do is actually create a whole crap ton more of the solar panels. And that way I, we can do this stuff. All right. Let's see what the next one is. Assuming it didn't already loop again. And, oh, we got emerald ores and we got topaz ores. So we got stuff from Minecraft and we got stuff from Biomes of Plenty. That's awesome. Now, you might be asking, what the hell are these things for? All right, those things are lenses, and that's what I have here. Now, each different color of lens does a different thing. Now, I don't have the list with me because I'm an idiot and forgot to open it. But uh, each one of these lenses makes it more likely to get a specific type of ore. Like, I believe the blue one makes it more likely to get diamond, for example. Um, I think it does more, but I don't remember. Maybe that was the white one. I actually forget. But that's okay. I mean, you could just check it out on the wiki. I found all this information on the FTB wiki. Uh, the FTB wiki is actually pretty good. I found it a really good place to go but uh, these just increase the chances of you getting those ores it doesn't mean that you will only get those ores or you won't get those ores it just increases the odds that you will and that's exactly what i want uh one of these actually two of these technically i forget which ones exactly actually gets me the ores from the nether the tinker Co tinker's construct ores it was tanzanite coal sapphire Tanzanite is still biomes of plenty. Hmm. Maybe if we let this thing run for a little while, we'll go to the promised lands and lag the hell out of the server. That would be funny. But I mean, it it, it is that simple. And it is, too. Um, plus the overwhelming fact that since I have this texture act here, I can put this anywhere. Uh, we got two coal ore. I, yeah, like I don't remember what the lens is do but i did fiddle with this on the test world and it works it actually works pretty well um what i might do is put some serious serious effort into getting uh the resident energy cells and making that generator i showed you guys that's in my creative world uh so i can just get straight up infinite power and then just power this thing forever granted let me think the resonant energy cells, they output, wait, how much do they output? They output 10,000 a piece, right? Uh, at thermal expansion, uh, shift. Yeah, they output 10,000 RF per tick. So I really only need two of them outputting to make this system work. So what I could do is just set up the system here or above it somewhere. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, that would work great. And then I could keep the power system and the system itself in the same chunk. Maximize power output and just leave it run. Put one of the poppet shelves down and bam. All kinds of crap. Still don't have anything overly useful. Lapis, to tanzanite. Uh, yeah, tanzanite is something you need for uh, the promised land. So is sapphire. The Biomes of Plenty Sapphire, by the way, not the Project Red Sapphire. And then Topaz, the Biomes of Plenty Topaz, not the... Oh, crap. I forget which one it is. It's not this mod pack, though. It was in the Community Mod mod pack. Um... No, not Artifact. Oh, I forget. Uh, but uh, there is another Topaz, but it's like a blue Topaz. And uh, the blocks it makes actually are really sweet looking. Uh, I had a whole bunch of them. I actually started building with them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's really it. This is really simple to make. 
if not for the fact that it's a little bit expensive. I mean, you need the pink slime to begin with. Uh, where are these guys? Yeah, uh, I mean, you need the glowstone illuminators. They're not hard. They're just annoying. Uh, redstone reception coils, not hard at all. Diamonds, couple diamonds. I mean, it's, especially in this bond pack, if you don't have an overabundance of diamonds, you're not doing it right. Hardened glass. Uh, the hardest part would be obsidian, but we have already made an obsidian generator. The plastic sheets are easy to get. Um, really, the hardest part... Electrum is actually mildly annoying to get, but it's not terribly hard because you need silver and gold. Okay, that's easy. Uh, the Really, the hardest part to get is the pink slime balls. And uh, you saw me. I got a pink slime. And I Well, I got the pink slime. I created a pink slime. I killed the pink slime. And then I got a stack of pink slime balls. I mean, that was terribly terribly simple so this actually for something as powerful as this is it's not that hard to make um one would think that uh, infinite ores would be kind of an end game item tin and aluminum still nothing really useful i have more lapis than i need but i do have stuff in here that i don't have an infinite system for like topaz sapphire tanzanite Technically lapis. Um, coal I can actually make infinitely. I just haven't built that system yet. Um, because I needed a better power source. Well, I have the better power source now. <laughs> uh, so that might be the next episode where I figure out where I make infinite coal. Um, yeah, did you slow down? You slowed down a lot. Uh, I, I take it our... Yeah, these systems are out of juice. These things aren't producing anything because the sun's not up. But that's easy to fix because I can just go to sleep. Takes a long time to fall asleep. Sounds familiar. I've been having that problem recently, too. Takes forever for me to fall asleep. And when I do, it doesn't take much to wake me back up. Uh, it's going faster now the sun's up because... Well, four of these lines of solar panels are powering this system directly. So, yeah. Like I said, I might have to take advantage of the glitch I found and make a just a glitch generator. So, anyways, uh, that's a, that was actually a fairly simple episode, but a really, really powerful one. Yeah, don't 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 walk into the drill beams. They they catch you on fire and they kill you. Not that bad, though. I mean, I still have, six, still have 63 out of 70 health, so not a big thing. And, I mean, that's pretty seriously it. I think we did a pretty good jo job here today. Um, like I said, tomorrow's episode... Or, not tomorrow's episode. I can't guarantee it'll be tomorrow. Uh, the next episode might be a coal episode. Infinite coal. I know that doesn't sound very interesting. I mean, infinite coal? Who cares? We can make charcoal infinitely and not have to worry about that. Um, it is actually far more interesting. I'm just set telling you the not interesting part. Uh, what might also happen, and I've been planning this for a while, is more like a uh, clip show kind of thing where I go around and then just very quickly touch on all of the things that I can make that I haven't because they're just far too close to what I've already made. They're just modifications of what I made. Um, I've been meaning to do this for a little while because you might not have thought of them. I mean, yes, all the information is there to make them, but you just might not have thought of it. And, I mean, I do that all the time. I'll do things and then not think of other things that I can do with the same ideas. I do it a lot. Um... Definitely, definitely, definitely in that episode, we are actually going to take advantage of Treebeard there, which I thought is a really, really cool idea. I thought of that idea. I, th I thought that was awesome. Uh, an actual reason to catch one of these guys. So stay tuned for that, because that's going to be an interesting one. Well, not really, but it'll be a fun one. Definitely be a fun one. Alrighty, so I will end the episode here before I ramble on any further. So I will say, see you guys in the next episode, and as always, 
keep playing the game, and have fun. Now I need to make a whole shit ton of poppet shelves so I can keep that area loaded. So that's what happens when you leave hot dogs sitting out for too long. <laughs>